All right, let's go now to the big decision from the Fair Work Commission today, going to raise the minimum wage by 5.7%, meaning those on the minimum wage will receive just under $2 more per hour from July 1. But that is really going to put pressure on small business. Joining me now to discuss this is the business commentator from News Limited, Herald Sun, Terry McCram, my old mate. Terry, um, did they get the right figure? Did they, they settle in the right spot? Or is this going to be really tough on, on businesses around the country? Well, who knows how they came arrived at this figure, uh, Steve. I mean, this is a, speaking bluntly, this is a very bad decision which takes us into very, very dangerous waters. I mean, it's all very well to be trying to look after the low-paid people in the community. And, you know, if looked at just narrowly, yes, it would be great to give them another wage rise, this sort of wage rise. But... If the consequence is to drive small business broke, if the consequence is to see interest rates go up much more than anybody has been anticipating, if the consequence is to see more people losing their jobs, and and again those will be hit most will be at the bottom end of the bottom end of the wage scale. If that's those are the sort of consequences, and that's really what we are talking about right now, then it's a disastrous decision which will have terrible impacts. Now, Steve, it needs to be understood that it sounds, you know, the 5.75% is actually more like 6.75% because on top of the wage is the 10% for superannuation. And then, as well, come July 1, there's an increase in the superannuation levy of half of 1%. So the cost to a small business is not 5.75%, it's much closer to 7%. And that's only, those, that's only the, the, the average. You then go into those, those very low-paid workers who are getting 8.6%, really closer to 10% when you add on the superannuation increases. This is going to be really, really punitive for, for small business especially, but business pretty much across the board. So, you know, they, they have a bigger wages bill and so they've got to then increase the cost of whatever they're selling or the service they're providing. I'm no, as you know, Terry, I'm no economic genius, but that to me says, well, they've got to put their prices up and if the prices go up, doesn't that add to inflation and doesn't that again say that the RBA is going to have to lift interest rates perhaps as early as next Tuesday? Well, again, go back to the impact on those low-paid workers. The higher the inflation is as a consequence of this, who gets hurt by that? It's precisely these lower income workers, and indeed everybody, but they, the pain will be most felt at the lower end of the wage scale. And you're absolutely right. I mean, on Tuesday, uh, Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe made it quite clear that he's struggling to achieve lower inflation if wages were increasing at 4% a year. Yeah, you're talking about closer to closer to 7% a year. This has to lead to much heftier interest rate rises than would have been the case if there'd been a lower decision today. And it really has to start on Tuesday. I mean, it's, it's now an absolute no-brainer that we'll get an interest rate hike on Tuesday. And if I was Philip Lowe, I would have to be seriously thinking over whether he has to go back to the 50-point rises that he had earlier in the piece, not just another 25-pointer. Great column today, by the way, comparing uh, the new government with Gough Whitlam. I know you would have thought long and hard about writing that, but uh, I read it with great interest. Thanks, Terry. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you, mate. I'll talk to you again soon.